Now, I'm probably going to be called out for being a little bit biased here because, well, you know, and and then, you know, and then I've got her here and then I've got her and Lovely was actually purchased specifically for this run. We've also got Dive back here and Blue in the background. She's just kind of hanging out. But uh, what can I say? I like me some sharks have since I was young. This is a weirdly good game. Like, a weirdly good game. Now, I'm going to say the bad part first. The DLC sucks. And I can explain how the DLC sucks in one very coherent, simple anecdote. So I get out to the DLC area, the new zone, and I open up the map. There is a two-second delay, and then the map opens. When I zoom out the map to look at all the icons on the map to see what there is to do, I see nothing because you have to zoom in the map to see the icons. Also, there's a bit of stuttery and control loss, like it's dropping frames as I'm out there. That is the DLC in a nutshell. It's just unpolished. It's very clear that they had some ideas and threw them together. This is a straight-up example of Cashin Syndrome. I strongly recommend not playing the DLC. And I have to stress this because every problem I just mentioned also then bleeds out to the rest of the game. Funny anecdote, if you play this game on the Switch, you cannot get the DLC. Go for it. Because the base game, without the DLC installed at all, is actually awesome. And I wanted to talk about this briefly, because there's not actually much to cover here in terms of depth, except there kind of is. The developers have mentioned they were inspired by several games when it came to the development of the combat of this game. Most of you will probably recognize Dark Souls as an inspiration here, but for me, the punch-out inspiration was much more noticeable. Because a lot of the combat is all, of, especially if you're not over-leveled, is all about watching them and watching their reaction and either preempting it or trying to bypass it entirely and then counterattack. And every combat encounter in the game is designed around that. And there are quite a few different types of enemies with a surprising amount of depth to how that combat works. It, it's, it was an anecdote I gave on stream, but it is true that it is weirdly bizarre that the game with the greater depth to its gameplay is the game where you play a shark and eat people instead of the tactical turn-based game, you know, the turn-based tactical game we just played, which is Wargroove. But it's true. There is a surprising amount of depth to the gameplay. Uh, swimming around is fun. The mixing and matching parts is enjoyable. You can fast travel around to get things. Collecting things was smooth and enjoyable and rewarding because you get new parts and new abilities from that. And, of course, you get new resources in order to upgrade those parts to really play around with your kit. You have set bonuses, which can give you all kinds of fun stuff. But you can also just mix and match however you want to, and there's no real detriment to doing so. This has really solid gameplay. Fun boss fights, fun little apex encounter things. Um, it was fun to just chip or shred my way through the, the hunters every now and again, pretty much just because the layout of the actual worlds, for the most part, there are some zones which don't really follow this, but most of the zones are well laid out and well designed. Good stuff pretty much top to bottom. Even the narrative side of things is surprisingly interesting, albeit extremely dark. Uh, this is kind of the GTA thing, and if you don't know what I mean by that, uh, something I mentioned very recently, just last year, is my theory, which I now hold to be true, that the GTA verse, most especially 5, which would also include 4, is a world in which nobody has any empathy. Uh, so imagine that for a moment, just a world where no human being has the capacity for empathy for someone else, and that really explains everything about that setting and how messed up it is, which leads me naturally to this game. This game and its setting, everyone kept saying this is a shark game in set of the GTA verse because this setting is messed up. I will not go into too many details, but there are lots and lots and lots of examples of just how awful the world that we're living in, that is to say that the shark is living in, really is. So that's cool. But it's almost all background stuff, visual storytelling, brickwork, uh, just, just little inferences here and there. And that's good. It's also kind of Dark Soulsy in its own way. But the biggest thing, and this is going to sound strange, the biggest thing that makes this game work is the length of it. This is an extremely dense game. It reminds me of several of the Modern Warfare games. You know, it's a four-hour game, but man, that four hours is absolutely packed, right? This is a little longer than four hours. In fact, this was a 15.17-hour game for our playthrough, although a decent chunk of that was padding in the DLC because of all the other mistakes the DLC made, it also added padding, which I remind you, was not in the base game at all. 
So, <clears throat> still, uh, probably about a 10-ish hour game. And I had fun with every single hour of that. I didn't get bored of it until I got to the DLC. My viewers didn't get bored of it until I got to the DLC. I'd say that's a pretty solid recommendation. I don't really actually know what else to add to this. I want me to double check my notes to make sure there's anything else. I mentioned the builds, I mentioned the bosses, I mentioned the combat. I mentioned the enemy design. Surprisingly good enemy design in this one. Level design, yep. Oh, of course, viscerality. Uh, I, oh, right. I do actually want to mention one other thing. If you're not into frenetic gameplay, this might not be the game for you. Because, well, obviously there's the, the, ju the juke and move kind of combat, which I already mentioned. When you're just mass fighting things, like, say, flopping around on the beach eating people, or if you're, you know, fighting the hunters, then it's going to turn into an absolute shredder fest very, very quickly, especially if you're set up properly, which I highly recommend, because it's fun as hell. But the most fun I had in this game, and even my niece agreed with this completely, was when you'd flop up on the shore and just kind of send yourself catapulting, like, 50 feet forward, and just eat, just navigating on the land. There's even a power-up called Amphibious, which does exactly what it sounds like. And so you can just stay on the land for, I think it's about a solid minute, without having to go back for water, and you are very fast on the land. And what's really cool about this is while the shark looks, you know, very well animated and very precise, and it's all cool looking underwater, it's also animated to look as floppy and ridiculous as possible on the land, but still control well. One of the most common questions I got during the course of the game was, does this game still control? It doesn't look like it controls well, to which my answer is, yeah, no, I felt completely in control of the game the entire time. But that's a feat, in my opinion, and it deserves to be mentioned as well. That's all I got. Sharks are awesome. I'll see you next time.